Aura257. You're probably well familiar with this error message in the same way that most of us know 1013 means you've been booted off you know, your system or 942 table does not exist. 257 strikes fear into the heart of many a DBA because it means you cannot connect or use the database because that fateful error is your archive log destination is full. And it's funny how our error message shows the history of the Oracle database. It says connect internal only until you've got some free space. Those of you that are new to Oracle will be unfamiliar with what connect internal means. It's the same as connect slash as sysdba. You used to actually type in connect internal to do a sysdba connection back in the Oracle seven days. But yeah, your archive is full. Here's the question that came in. Can I shut down the database when I encounter an Aura 257 and shut the database down, get everyone off it, increase the amount of free space or free up some space and then safely start it up? My answer is to whether you should shut the database down and fix up the errors is yes, but no. And here are my three rules for why, or three pieces of advice for why I don't think it's a good idea to shut the database down to fix an archive log space. Number one, I'm a firm believer is that you never shut your database down. You should never ever shut your database down unless you are absolutely forced to. That's my, because let's face it, Generally, the moment you take your database away from people, they're either upset or you're losing money. Businesses, you know, you're meant to be uptime. And it always blows my mind that, you know, we have all these amazing technologies to keep your database running. And yet people will regularly say, oh, we do a weekly reboot, we do a monthly this, etc." There's gonna be plenty of times you need to shut your database down anyway, because of things like security patches, etc. cetera. But yeah, let's keep them as a minimum. You should never shut your database down just for the sake of shutting it down. So please, you know, make sure that, you know, you don't shut your database down. All the goodies, you know, I'll happily admit Oracle ain't a cheap product. We charge for it, you know, at the high enterprise edition ends, we charge a good chunk of money. The reason we do is because the technology in there is incredibly sophisticated. Most of it revolving around memory. You've got the buffer cache, you've got the library cache, you've got um, the in-memory pool, et cetera, the result cache. All these things designed to make your applications run faster. And then every time you shut your database down, you're chucking all that good stuff away and rebuilding it again from scratch. Yeah, you know, that's like throwing money away because that's where a lot of the investment in Oracle R&D goes, getting the most out of the memory available on server. So don't shut those machines down, you know, unless you absolutely have to, which hopefully will only ever be planned maintenance. So that's rule number one. Number two is, the risk of shutting your database down or even not is that concept of going outside what the database knows. And I put it here, you should never lie to recovery manager. And the reason I put that there is it's very common for people to go, ah, oh, in a panicky situation, I'm out of space. Fine. I'll just jump out to my archive destination. I'll either move them somewhere or I'll just delete them. So all of a sudden I got some free space and I can resume business. This is a very easy trap to fall into because, of course, you've probably got seven managers standing behind you, either physically or virtually, going, you know, is it fixed yet? Is it fixed? Is it fixed? Is it fixed? Yeah, you know, there's pressure on a DBA to get those, you know, those operations back up and running as fast as they can. But if you take any kind of reparative action that is outside of Recovery Manager, you now have two versions of reality. Our man thinks the archive logs are there. In reality, they're no longer there. They might be somewhere else. You might have compressed them, etc. You've got this mismatch. If you ever then call into some sort of catastrophe down the line where Arman needs those archive logs to recover, it thinks they're there. It is blissfully unaware that they are now gone. And therefore, it's so critical because it's then in another situation, a month down the track, you're in even a worse panic because your Arman says, I can't recover. I thought I could, but I can't because the archive logs I thought were there are no longer there. So any reparative action you do, you should take with Arman. For example, if you need to free up some space, you would use Arman to back up the archive logs and then delete them with Arman. Because then Arman knows that I've got them backed up, it knows where they are in the backup sets, and it knows that it took care of deleting them, so it knows they're not sitting there out on the file system or in your flash recovery area to make sure that it can handle restoring them should you need to do a recovery. Never lie to Arman, which pretty much don't go outside the database to actually go hunting around. 
I suppose a, a corollary or a slight sort of um, variation on a theme is a lot of us are moving our databases to cloud, whether we like it or not, but a lot of databases are moving to cloud. And I think it's good to get in the habit of assuming that every database you look after, even the ones that are sitting there on your own servers, even the ones on my own laptop here, assume they are cloud databases. And what I mean by that is resist the urge to go poking around at the operating system level in order to manage your database because eventually there's a very good chance one day that facility will not be available to you. The way you manage an Oracle database is from within the Oracle database. Even if you have an entire VM on the cloud, the likelihood is operating system access starts to get more and more restricted. So the less you have to rely on tinkering out in the OS layer, the more ready you are as a DBA in terms of your skill set to be going to things like the cloud. As I said, in terms of never lying to Arman, if you need to free up archive space, the easiest way to do it is to back up those archives and then delete them. I'd be inclined to back them up twice even because if you lose, your, if you lose an archive, you're toast. If you lose a full backup, generally you can go back to the previous full backup and then just it takes longer, you're just going to roll through more archives. But if you lose an archive, you're dead in the water. Simple as that. So I always like having two or more copies of my archives, but for the sake of this discussion, make sure that you actually do the backup and deletion of archives via RMAN so it knows. The reason people generally go into the operating system to do this is even if they do the right thing, they use RMAN, they back up the archives, they delete them from the various archive destinations so they've got free space, nothing happens. They sit there and they go, okay, I, you know, I very quickly backed up just a couple of dozen archive logs. I've got you know a couple of gigabytes, 10 gigabytes free now. Why isn't my database going again? And that creates that panic in which it's like, okay, I'll go out and delete more or I'll bounce my database, et cetera. The reason your database is still stuck is not because of some sort of operating system issue. It's generally in the way that you've configured your archive logs. This is perhaps the most common thing you'll see. This is actually straight from my laptop here, that people configure their archive logs with the bare minimum, which is where do I send my archives? You might have a like archive format parameter, but most people just go, look, I'm happy with the format parameter nowadays in modern versions. It's got all the uniqueness it needs. There we go. There's my location. I'm done. What that does by default in most versions of Oracle, if I run out of archive space, I'll stop archiving there. And every five minutes, I'll check again to see if that archive destination is now available for use. That's every five minutes. So if you're unlucky and get it one minute into that five minute check and your archiver is full, You'll be waiting four minutes after you've done this backup to actually get your services back up and running. If you add a reopen equals and then a number of seconds, you can actually control that parameter. I typically put reopen equals 60 because by the time I've ready, I've sort of done my backup with my RMAN and sort of you know collected my thoughts, one minute has passed anyway, and my system will start running. So by the time I log in and do a sanity check, likelihood is my system is up and running and the adrenaline <laughs> dribbles out from me. I've stopped the panic and life returns to normal. So you can use the reopen parameter to make sure that you avoid that panic situation of thinking that you're still stuck when you're not. So just to reiterate, my three guidelines are, don't shut your database down when the archiver is full because you don't shut your database down ever. Don't lie to RMAN. RMAN is the way you get out of an archive log error situation. And finally, you know, assuming it's the cloud, really it's a way of saying don't poke around in the OS layer. Bye.